How's it taste? I don't know. I just had another life-changing experience. I uh, sometimes if you see me and I have no expression, it's because there. I just ate your artwork. Like I just feel like I just ate Andy Warhol's paintings. <laughs> well, you know, talking about artwork, and I cannot wait to see these this uh, artwork in Mexico. Also, caught in the bright lights. That's all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Folks, welcome home. Another edition of Cooking with the Blondes here at the magnificent Shakers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's part of our entire Flash of the Pan concept. Now, Amber and I are going to Oaxaca next week, and we're That's going exciting. to be... Yeah, this is exciting. I'm so excited. And we are going to be into all sorts of foods and uh, native ceremonies, some religious things for the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. Uh, but really, it's the food and the other cultural components that I think are really attracting yeah, me. Definitely. So hopefully we're going to have the opportunity to get uh, Amber into a kitchen somewhere down there as well and she can impress uh, all of Mexico with the culinary skills. I'm, I'm definitely going to try. There I you mean, go. I can see the movie Coco. Well, well, there we are. So, it's perfect. Let's go. So uh, we're going to start off by doing a simple uh, mole verde sauce, which is a green sauce. And mole, of course, is, is really Mexican for sauce. So um, verde is green and mole is sauce, so it's a green sauce. And the thing about this, as we talk about all the time, is use the ingredients that you have, the things you have access to. Mm -hmm. So you might say, well, in my family, we use sesame seeds, we use something else. If you don't have sesame seeds, you don't have to do that, it's all cool. Right. So um, we're gonna start off with things that are green, right? And I wanna get these toasted first. So these are... Uh, those look like pumpkin seeds, but I could be wrong. God, you are good. These are pumpkin Ooh. seeds. Oh, look at that. No, no priming ahead of time, she just knows, look at that. So pumpkin seeds, they've obviously been hauled. Not like a hockey player, Bobby Hall, but hauled. And while that's taking place, I would like you very much to take this nopalito, or nopalis, or cactus. Ooh, cactus. Cactus, and put this into our Roboku, and mulch that down. And the cool thing about this, again, I'm not getting paid to say this, in my mind, Roboku makes the best food processors Robocou. in the world. The French, and the French know one or two things about good cookery. So right on top of there, just poof, right in. Just throw it in? Just throw it in. All right, ooh, look at that cactus. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. what is that, the juices in there? Is that just kind of like the... Cactus um, juice. So okay. here we have okay. the actual leaf of the nopalis. Now be careful of this because there are thorny little things everywhere, like little needles that really yeah. do hurt. You ever sit on one of those? Uh, no, but I've gotten them stuck <laughs> almost everywhere else. Yeah. So it just gives you some idea about, because you asked about the, the gooey stuff on the inside, this is kind of like an aloe vera. See, it's gonna it's gonna seep or weep like that. So it's got that really sebaceous kind of a thing, yeah. like, like yeah. fat. And um, that is what that goodness is that we're gonna be processing down along with the meat of this. Um, if you want to take them this way and clean each one of these off diligently with your little needle nose pliers and then scrub them up, you feel free. We have done that for years for our cool cactus chutney. Um, ouch, but we're just not going to do that today. So that being said, I'm going to take them out of the way. There they are. Oh, they're dangerous. Uh huh. Look at that. All right, okay. so we got our cactus in here, and we're going to turn on our Roboku and give it a little twirl. Twirl. Sounds like it's doing its job. It's doing its job. Yeah. It's going around in a circle, just okay. like the wheels on that bus. So um, I think that's probably good for this portion of this. And uh, if you want to see what it looks like, it looks just like a slurry. Okay, right? yeah, look at that. So I think at this point we want to get some of our... Ooh, tomatillos, they are my favorite. I always seek them out everywhere. It's I love these guys. So obviously we could get these whole and fresh and you can peel off the husk as well. Um, I like them to be brined ahead of time, so that's what we've done. We've peeled them, and they've been sitting in this little brine solution. So uh, primarily salt and a little bit of sugar make the world go round. And that's going to go right over to Amber, and she's going to get some of those in there. Not so much juice, but just the okay. actual the yeah. tomatillos. Yeah. While she's doing that, I'm going to take some of these poblano chilies, which are fantastic to stuff and all sorts of things. And I'm just going to give these a... A coarse cut, not a chop, but a coarse cut. And then that also is going to go into our processor because we just want all sorts of green goodness inside of there. So these are all incredibly fresh tasting things. 
and you can find poblanos in every market now, probably in the United oh, States. Oh yeah, definitely. It's more common than uh, than you know. I mean, my we grow them in my backyard. Oh, great! <laughs> yeah, about twelve different kinds. So, uh, how many uh, do you usually uh, mix in with here? How many you got in there? Amber? Uh, two, four, six, seven. I think seven is the perfect amount. Unless you want one more, that's ocho. Uh, yeah, you know, one more for uh, for good luck. <laughs> For good luck, sure. Bob. Well, you know, if you were doing a Chinese thing, uh, that's all about good luck for number eight. Exactly. All right, so I will swap you. If you yes, want to take sir. now our poblanos and toss it into your slurry mix. Cool. I love peppers. Who doesn't? Okay, all of them? Uh, if we can fit them in, I think okay. they're going to go their way down there. I think okay. yes. All right. There we go. And over here we have some uh, peeled garlic cloves. And you, and those of you who watch this program, which is three or four people, you see us all the time smashing these things. Oh, you do that very well. Well, it's all that oh. angst I got inside of me. I got it directed yeah. somewhere, right? Look at Bob. So Ooh. anyway, um, that's Bob's part. Now Amber can get uh, get her frustrations out yeah, for no, a moment. I, I'm, I'm pretty inspired there. Not that you have frustrations, but just in case, <laughs> you can let it go. So oh. these are really smelling fantastic right now. So they're toasting up really nicely. Oh, and then from this point, Not these little point. guys are also going to go into our food processor bowl right over here. Oh. So I try to do this without burning oh. anybody, especially not you. Okay, I got some uh, silver salvadine at home. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cooking, the cook's uh, favorite thing to have. That's what they say. Yeah. Okay, how many of these should I do, Bob? Um, I'm I think trying like, to decide how many I do first. Uh, well, we get eight of those. Why not eight of these two? Look at that. And then after that, we're going to, I think, go for the uh, epizote. epizote. And you're oh, going to yeah. say, what the hell is an epizote? Well, epizote is this, uh, is this really cool little green thing here that you can't find in every market. Um, it generally has 11 little lobes on it. And by that, I mean, if we were to break this guy off, uh, it should have one on each side to two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven lobes. And it's there are other things that uh, are used in Mexican cookie that are very velvety-like. Uh, this is not one of those, but it has a interesting little flavor to it. It's also called a root beer plant sometimes, oh. though, though I can't quite get that from here. Oh, I smell it. There's something I like a sarsaparilla, but it's oh. uh, it's just a little bit, well, it's different. Where, where can I find this? And like, where's it originate from? Oh, right here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's indigenous to Central and South America, and okay. uh, you know the, the northern uh, part of all that feeds into Mexico as well. So Ooh. let's just say probably equatorial areas, but I've seen this in Colombia too. So it's, it's around. Bob, you're everywhere. Well, we should go there. Okay. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, okay. here, we're gonna just gonna take this, and we're just gonna do this uh, really. Bob, I just love watching you do this. You, wow. can, you can come over and cook for me anytime. I'm, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be honored to, absolutely. Yeah, in here? Yeah. Okay. So we've got this other epizote, and I think what I'm going to do with this is I've got a chicken working in a pot right over here, a little Ricky Lee Jones chicken in a pot kind of a thing, right? So we're going to use some of that stock, and not quite yet, so we can get our temperature back up to speed. And uh, then we're just going to take some of the epizote and stick that in with that and give oh. that all sorts of yummy flavor. How's that? Yeah, I just got like ultra excited right, as that happened. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, food so excites me. A little too much. No, no, I think just, just the right amount. Yes. So we're just going to, again, do the same thing. Our little slurry action is going on here. A little drippage down the side is not a big deal. It's all good because you want to have this as a, a wet sauce, right? It's a sauce. It's not a rub. I'm going to be more excited when I eat this. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So what I'd like to do now is to take this, and we're going to drain it into here, this hot pan okay, that it. had the pumpkin seeds in it. And while you're doing that, you don't give me, you could be as gentle or otherwise as you wish. I've seen uh, this verde done a couple different ways. And since we're doing mole, people really identify moles with the chocolate. So and is, it, is this chocolate? Like This is. So this is the product. We've shown this in a few other things. Oh. Okay. Abuelita, grandmother. That's everyone's grandmother right there. Hey, grandma. Right? Sure. Hey, grandma. <laughs> So um, this is a Mexican chocolate, which is also processed with sugar. You can see little crystals that are in there, and cinnamon. Smell it. So I can just like watch movies and just eat this. You could. Okay. You could. Same. But right now we're gonna put this into our processor. After we get this into there. Okay. 
We're going to get this into that processor. Can I just pour it in? Yeah. Oh, please. Okay. All right. Whoa. Okay. So that's just the, the oh latent or residual heat that goes back from when we do the pumpkins, oh, right? Oh, yes. That's fine. That's all good. Oh, I can drink this. Mm, well, <laughs> almost. And highly yeah. nutritious, I'm sure. It smells the, so good. Yeah, nutrition. Sure, See? the phytochemicals are there. Um, so we'll get this back up to speed a little bit now. And in there, we can take our chocolata oh, and put that in our blender. With the rest of this? Yep. Oh, okay. We're going to use it all. Oh! So we're making two different versions with the same. Oh, I love uh -huh. this. So we're going to take off just the, the tips of these right now. So basic green onions. And we just kind of work this way down. Again, take your fingers and create a bridge. We talk about this all the time. And that way, your fingertips will stay attached to your fingers. Now, with some things, we just use the green portion for this, but this is one of those dishes where I want to get as much flavor in as I can. I'm going to take this little stubby thing here and toss it again into our stock to enhance that, but this I'll go down just a little more. You know, I love how you use like everything, just everything of the, the foods. It's exciting. It does create all those flavors, like things that you wouldn't think of normally. It's like, oh yeah, I can use this. Well, thanks for, thanks for noticing that. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I got All right. You. Well, Amber, my dear, if you wouldn't mind taking this, let's get this in the uh, processor as well. All right. This is fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, a little piece of chocolate in there. Too bad you guys uh, maybe wouldn't have noticed. I would have just popped that right in my, my mouth. Mm hmm. So we have these uh, various stages of doneness for avocados, or avocados, which are in various stages of doneness. And this is perfect because this is just that point that maybe you don't want to have that for your presentation for a finish, mm -hmm. but it's just going to be incredibly yummy right now to use this way. Use your knife and pop it out. Be careful you don't cut yourself, of course. Please. You do that like a pro. Uh, I, I've watched you before. <laughs> I watched you a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so that doesn't oh. sound creepy. So no, that's going to go it. right in the processor as well. All right. So we've had a, a whole episode or a series of episodes this week that are just using all sorts of things, 17 ingredients, 21 ingredients, whatever. I didn't even bother to count what we got going on here, but it's a bunch of stuff. This is just spinach. And anytime you can get a natural spinach, an organic spinach, not something which is uh, cultivated, I think you're way well, ahead of the game. Is. It is dark, dark green. I'll put that in my smoothie. This is my smoothie right here. Well, this is all going to go in that processor, except the, the very small portion of the stem. So if you want to take your bench knife and get that in there, or your hands, either way is cool. Wait, should I have been using my hands? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yes, I like uh, everything should be everything should be very hands-on. Yes. Absolutely. I love hands-on stuff. Because you get a feel for what you're working with. It's not just how it looks and how it smells, but you really, um, I, you know, I kind of consider it like the zen of cooking as well. So when you get a hands-on thing... Do you want thing, me to get these? I want it all in. Oh, okay. I want it all. Yes, I, I should know these things. Well... <laughs> right, Bob? Given the um, opportunity, I want it all. Yes. So, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So here we've got... Oh, cilantro. Cilantro. I love cilantro. And again, this is looking like some of it's not, hmm, you know, the happiest in the world, but it's not going to be for presentation. It's going to be for the flavor. Yeah. It still has value to us. So that, not this. This mm -hmm. could all go in there as well. Okay process that That's guy down. Up in there. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to like eat this. And I'm just a fan of getting some oil into these things. I like to have a oh little goodness. bit of fat. So you don't need to have olive oil. You don't need to have any one of these ingredients actually. If you got four out of five of them or you know 15 out of 17. Okay, olive, oil, olive oil are This you is just an extra virgin. I prefer to get Greek or Tunisian. Uh, this happens to be a Tunisian as well. So they just seem to have uh, groves that are less affected by pesticides and other things. Yeah. So uh, maybe one day we'll get over to Europe. We can film a segment there. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Cool. We'll come back. We'll, we'll go after Mexico. Well, I, yeah, I think actually uh, South America is going to be next for us, but okay, uh, we can perfect. do that too. All right, so let's get that process okay. down. Okay, a... This little guy? Oh, the dome. The, okay. The donut. Call it anything you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Bob. See if I can work this. And this is called the Robot Cube. Robo Cube. Fine oh, here we go. Thing. So actually, you got to have it on. Let me show you. This is uh, the one tricky thing about this. If you start from this side, it's going to oh. line up like that. And you must, there's magnets in here. So you must, it's a safety thing. So you must have it like that. And then away you know, she goes. Robocoo is going to have a sponsor uh, for you. Look at that. Uh, well, oh, it's, it's, it's Sure. Call us. Call us. 
call it anything. And the uh, the blade inside is a uh, sabatier. Sabatier is crunch. Now uh, that's working its magic pretty nicely. What do you think? Uh, well, there's a little. Uh, oh, that's okay. It's Again, it's oh, just yeah, gonna yeah. be it's a cooking sauce. It's yeah. okay. Oh, it looks good. It looks good. All right, so off oh, we are. I don't want to press it. I'm just kidding. Can't help myself. It's like pushing buttons. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. There we are. So I think we got pretty much everything in there that we want to have in there. Yeah. Right? So our cilantro, our pumpkin seeds. Like I put my love in there. All right. Well, yeah. Of course. <laughs> All right. So let's get this into this and do okay. a little stirry thing with it. So I'm going to put this into this one. Yep. So, oh, okay. So I'm going to go and oh, marry wow. together and be really happy. Okay. Now for this wait. to undo this, we've got to go the opposite here. direction. Oh, yeah. Well. It's called Cocoon Blonde, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well. Oh, okay. Oh, I had to turn it. Okay. Now, when you I'm, do I'm that, learning. I'm sure. learning. Now, be careful. You take this hand and push down on the S-blade so it doesn't flop into here and splatter back. Oh, and yeah. You don't want that to okay, happen. we don't want that. Okay. No, not so, so just, much. Um, about how much do you think? All of it. All of it. Okay. Absolutely all of it. All of it. Oh, look at all that goodness. Mm-hmm. Dump the rest in my pocket. Take mm -hmm. home later. Well, that wouldn't be too well, bad. Well, we'll fill you up. Maybe not your pocket. <laughs> well, bad first. Okay, that looks good. All right, looks. so that's going to do its little thingy. And if you got a spoon, how about this one? We can just... So, you know, what they'll teach you when you go to culinary school is to do these little S maneuvers first because you get better motility taking place. And that's all cool, but I think the reality is at some point you've got to get the perimeter meshed into there as well. And I see people that'll, you know, come to work here and yeah, they've been watching the cooking channel and they're just going to do this all day. I'm like, well, that's cool, but what about all this? Right. You want to get all that to mix together. Ooh. I, I just I just love coming here because... Just because. I, I mean, how could you not want to love coming well, here? Well, I mean, even last time I learned uh, beauty hacks with food. Uh -huh. That would be a segment all its own. Absolutely. Oh, We're going to start doing God. a little uh, cooking for couples thing as well. Ooh. So that'll be fun. Yeah. All right, so here we just have some uh, thighs. Who doesn't love chicken thighs? I think that, uh, unfortunately, in America, we want all white meat, but I think that the dark meat on this is more succulent, juicier, more flavorful. Is that healthier? And or it's healthier. Just... I think it is. Okay. Well, I mean, more, maybe more nutrients-wise. I'm not going to argue with you. So, yeah. All right, so we're getting this to heat up a little bit first, and we're going to get just a little bit of browning taking place on the skin side oil, down. Yeah. Right, this is just mm -hmm. olive oil. Okay, just olive oil. So, nothing else. We don't have any oregano, and you think that uh, obviously there's there's two primary types of oregano. There's Greek oregano, and there's Mexican oregano, and then Mexican oregano would fit in here. If you got it, if you want it, use it. My personal thought is it doesn't have to go in because there's so many other flavors that are here. Right. It just wouldn't pop through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot yeah. of flavors going on here. All right, so I'm going to get a, uh, a ladle thing, and then Ew. we're going to get that into there. And But first, we should get some of these lovely... Oh yeah, that's the first thing I saw the, when I came in today. What is this? These spot? are pasilla chili peppers. Mm -hmm. And pasilla chili peppers are the dried version of uh, chalacas. Oh yeah, chalacas. Chalacas. It rolls off the tongue. So these are, uh, if you let them sit for too long uncovered, they're going to get really dry and leathery. Can I feel it? You know, yeah, I mean, you're going you're gonna to cut them down in a minute. So that's nice. That's soft oh, and yeah. pliable. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would eat this as chips, you know. Uh, sure. <laughs> So if, when it, if it got dry. Remember, we got this 100-year-old bench here, so yes, there's a little yes. divity thing, so be careful with this. But just give us little pieces like that, okay? Okay. It's easy enough. Mm-hmm. Like using big knives. Trusty. Bob, you look, make this look so easy. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, Bob, it, Bob has the muscles. i got to work out. Well, the more we cook together, Amber, the easier <laughs> it gets. Oh, oh man. Bobby, just make this look easy. Here I am. Okay, so I see a lot of seeds popping out here. See that, guys? I, uh, I like the seeds. Do you want me to go? Yeah, okay. yeah. If we right. if we were doing something for the queen, we'd want to have no seeds, but she's right. not part right. of our party today. So yep, no queen. Watch you just your got fingertips. The king. <laughs> we got the king today. Name's Bob. Plenty of uh, princesses who work here, so they want to get their uh, their cover in as well. Oh, very nice. Okay, they're not as perfect. Look, look at look at this. Uh, the symmetry is just oh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to come here more often. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're not perfect, but where am I? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll edit some of this out later. 
It'll be like one hour later. Uh-uh, no edit at all. One take for one take. Okay, how many of these do you want, Bob? Um, I want awkward. actually all of them. How's that? Oh, oh okay. Right. So I'm okay. just taking, while you're doing that, I'm taking this little avocado and I'm just doing a little simple cross hatch on here because I want to get all the parts out. It's going to be easier to scoop that way than if you try to take it out whole. So I just want to get this mixed into this and it doesn't have to be blended into it. It's just going to have its own little creaminess. And you're not necessarily going to taste the avocado, but you will get that texture. Umami is so important to everything that we do. Ooh, so, you know, people think about umami as, as really being a Chinese thing, um, <laughs> and it's not. Oh. So the, the name itself, I believe, is Japanese, but it's not even confined to that. It is the texture you get, and all sorts of things you put in your mouth have a textural component that you will, that provoke different memories and make you think about different things, right? So, exactly. umami is crucial. Umami. Umami. Okay. Like your umami, but different. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole oh, different, wow. that's a whole different milk that. show that we could be doing, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's just exploded with seeds. That was crazy. It was fun. Uh -huh. well, it was like it's, a celebration. It's, hap it's happy to see you, that's all, so. Right? No, and then, okay, what are these peppers called again? Pasilla. Pasilla. You know, many times it took me to say boyabase. Mmm, boyabase. <laughs> I can say it now. <laughs> this is going to be another vocabulary word. I need a test. You're going to have to give me a test. Oh, I'll give you a test. Yay. So we're winding down as far as the components to go right. in here. Oh, we just need to get here. a little bit of lime in here. And oh. look, you have a little bit of lime. Okay, anyone watching me cutting full like this? Uh, and this is a dragon fruit that we're this. not going to use. Oh, mm, look that at that. Cute. That was for the, uh, the Goa Probably cuisine sweet. that we did the other day. A little East Indian. Oh, I love Indian food. Have you ever been to India? No, but you have. Yes, I have. India, I went for the food. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Not for the uh, misogynistic environment that's there? That, uh, what was that? Not for the misogynistic environment that's there? Oh, the yeah. way that the society uh, abuses women? That's fine. Okay. So, yeah. uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not that part. <sighs> oh, jeez. Okay, next time I come, I'm going to be a master. I'm going to go home and cut these. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be a whole nother. Uh, is this good? Or maybe more? A little bit more. Okay. Just, uh, you know. This is a good workout. I didn't work out today, Bob. Well, we'll get you up and down the stairs. That's our leg day, so. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm excited. Look at all these seeds in there. So when we get back from Oaxaca, we are going to be doing a mezcal mole ole dinner, and I'd like you to be a part of that. I'll be here. And uh, we can talk about all our experiences. And oh, that'd then, be fun. Uh-huh. You can literally have a powwow. It's like a travel log. <laughs> we can talk about, you know, where we went, what we did. Yeah. We'll have like a little speaker system. We'll have a... Yep. Yeah. No, it'll be we, fun. We got all that stuff here. Oh, cool. All right. I'm going to go to this chicken, so I'm going to be on your left. And I just love cutting this because I, I can see all these uh, seeds. It's just it's like celebration. So I, I love I love cooking. I'm not, I'm, I gotta admit I'm not the best cook, but I am becoming the best cook now because of Bob. Otherwise, macaroni and cheese and reservations my thing to make. Oh crap! We should, a, uh, we should do a we should do a Cajun mac and cheese sometime. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure of my, uh, what do you think, Bob? How do I do? I think that's perfect. Amber, yeah. let's get this right on top of this. Okay. Seeds? Seeds and all. Okay, here you go. Here they are. Use your little bench knife if you want. It's oh, yeah, bench. happy for you. That's so much fun. Mm -hmm. okay. I won't get these green things in there. When I was little, I was so scared to eat green things. All right, let's go. Good. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Oh. Never felt so fancy. Oh, that, look at that. That's like, what is it? A Kodak moment? Right there. This time, I would like you to squeeze these lime halves into there. Okay. While I, a little scrape here. Oh my gosh, Patrick, you gotta edit me. <laughs> Those peppers. I was so full, I was like. Just kidding, okay. Uh, all right. And I'm gonna squeeze it in here. All right. My workout. I can right. say that too, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. You can tell you're out of shape when off. Just plainly try to cook. So not only is Mexico going to be the, the cultural investigation for the Dia de los Muertos, 
and obviously into all sorts of foodstuffs, but it's going to be uh, a play on our A Woman Abroad portion that we're going to be kicking off too. So the, the idea is to take you into places that you haven't been before. Oh, yeah. And uh, have an open eye kind of a, a viewpoint of what you're experiencing and what you're thinking about with that stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, just even like opening my eyes in somewhere different, like that's just so exciting to me. I was like, oh, where do you want to go? I'm like, everywhere. <laughs> Anywhere. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So... Uh, wow, this, uh, there's so many different things going on here, Bob. Look at this. The smells, uh, I feel like in Mexico right now. I see a sombrero. Real close. Yeah. Hey, what are we wearing? Um, well, it's hot, so not much. Huh. All right, so More this, by putting a dome on top, that's going to uh, help that to move along a little bit. And we're gonna get a little chicken stock is gonna go in. We could take that just about now if we wanted to. Well, how about now? So I'm just gonna take a, without getting the little scum on the top, I can move this out carefully, about six ounces or so, just gonna add to that. A little more goodness in there. And yeah, this is down, nice and low. I didn't see that coming. That's why it's so exciting. Chicken stock is in all sorts of things, and oh, yeah. it is. it's just good and good for you. For y'all. So could you make this without chicken stock? Like, let's say there's uh, yep. some vegetarian style. Uh, yes, those vegans who work here, we uh, have to make exceptions all the time for them. Yeah. But you well, what would you replace that with instead of chicken stock? Maybe like coconut water or something? Well, I mean, I you, you could, that makes it more of a, a Thai or a yeah. Vietnamese type of thing. You could do anything you want. It's your dish. Make it happy. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so this is moving pretty nicely, but now it needs to get this into here. Oh. So some of this down, and just take like three good ladlefuls. Watch your elevation here. All right. Okay. How about if you put these down? Oh, okay. There's strong Bob. Because Bob can be a clutch oh, sometimes no, to get that no, in there. No, no, no. Okay, so about three? Yeah, I think about three. Okay, so I... Uh... Evenly kind of okay. smushed around. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. And if three becomes four, that's okay too. Hmm. Oh, that sizzle though. Oh my gosh. Okay, this totally just made a whole new. Mm -hmm. And experience. the smells, man. Oh man, these smells are great. All right. We should so, make perfume. That will uh, be the next business sure. venture. We're gonna make. Sure. Uh, we're gonna make Bob's perfume. Uh, sure. <laughs> Another scent for a woman. Why not? It's yeah, like, all. Even vanilla scents. I mean, that's popular, right? We can make chicken and. Plenty of vanilla in Mexico. Um, so I'm going to take this guy out of the way right now. Okay. And then we're going to get some cilantro with some garlic and butter and get that going in there oh, for the fun. crab that we're going to do. Hmm. Can, but it's going to be hard to squeeze in that way. Okay, are we putting more limes in there? Uh-huh. Okay. Let's do it. Watch those fingertips. All right, so the reason that we're adding a little bit of lime juice to this lovely mole verde we have is because mole we want to keep it from oxidizing. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a minimal amount of lime in there, so it's not for the flavor, which is delectable with limes. It is. But it's just going to help to stabilize the oxidation as well, which yeah. isn't that big of a deal in something like this. If you look at this gorgeous chicken that we're about to pull out. And the backstory on this is it probably took us, oh, I don't know, less than 10 minutes to put everything together for our mole. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. So, seven, eight minutes, and then it's just been cooking away by itself. You can put this in the oven as well. Oh. You could do this in a crock pot or anything, quite frankly, but stove top, you know, maybe maybe 45 minutes or so. And you just want to make sure that the chicken itself is done, and we're going to be way overdone, so over what we're looking at for a minimum figure for doneness. So we are completely cooked, which is what we want to have happen. Right, and right. now, do you think it would give a different taste if you cook it in the uh, oven versus on the pan, or I don't like the way how um, you know the, the sizzles uh, together. Maybe it's the same. I don't know. Maybe hey, that's I mean, something else to try. You're right. Some things are affected that way. I don't think this would be, but maybe. And next time we'll do that. Okay. There's always the next time, right? Yes. Okay. Definitely. So let's take our little um, spatula here, which is this is oh, like something right here. every kitchen Art. should have, and it's actually it's a fish spatula. But you know what? 
the chicken doesn't know if it's fish or chicken. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So if you would, if you want to arrange, I think we have uh, seven thighs on there. Put okay. the thighs around on that, and that'll be like a what you would do for your family. Your, you know, yeah, like for the make kids. a little platter and everything. Just, just like that. So family Very style nice. or some such thing. Very good. So here you go. Oh my goodness. Well, I would just love to make this for everybody. I, I have a lot of vegetarians in my family. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we were talking, you know, what would you replace? I mean, the mole, for example, you're using chicken stock before. Mm -hmm. So something you replace to make it more of a Thai feel would be the coconut, as you said. Now, whenever things, I agree, whenever things are in season, I like using fresh things, farmer's market, what you grow at home, whatever. Um, obviously, we are in the end of October in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and there are not fresh strawberries to be had. Yep. So true. what I like to do is I will find a product like this, a strawberry nectar, and uh, Jumex is one of those, but Goya is another manufacturer does a really good oh. job with these things. And if you decide when you get into this that you want to have a little sweetness on this, because who doesn't want a little sweetness in their oh, life? Yeah. Life is sweet. It is. So you've got this is nice and thick enough and viscous enough. You can really just oh. kind of pour a little of the strawberry nectar over the top as well. I didn't see that coming, Bob. Oh, cool. Oh my gosh, you just made a whole other party on this plate. This plate. All right. So <laughs> what we're going to do, and you should taste that by itself to see what it's like. I'm going to turn this lovely stuff down, and we can then take even these pan... This would taste good with tequila, just saying. Mm -hmm. So pan drippings are, I think, just crucial to everything. Yeah, let me flip it that way for you, Patrick, and get that into there. And... Oh, I love this. Excellent. All right, so we got that going right now. The next thing to do is to clean up my plate a little bit. Ooh. So when it's your plate, it doesn't need cleaning. When it's my plate, it does. How's that? <laughs> That's my fault, Bob. Uh -uh. <laughs> and then we're going to get you a, a knife and a fork thing. Oh, look at this. And, um, uh, if you want to take a picture of this, frame it on my wall, <laughs> have you autograph well, it. Maybe, maybe not this oh, one, yeah. but we'll get there at some point. Okay. So in the meantime, uh -huh. start with that. And uh, here's a side plate if you so oh, desire. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Okay, so I am a easier, easier to cut that way. Just saying. Okay, so oh, look, look at that. It um, even though Bob said it was overcooked a little bit, it still looks very juicy. There's a lot of flavors in there you can see um, in the surrounding areas. So, oh, that actually looks phenomenally moist. Yeah, I think this is perfect. Excellent. Well, yeah. look at that. Okay. We did a uh, a dish the other day uh, with Lindsay, and we had these. Huge chicken breasts. It was ridiculous how large these things were. Um, so they just required a little more cooking time and a little lower cooking time so that you cook all the way through without the outside getting tough and hard. So that's just the thing too is that you can you can make the decision yourself how to moderate the temperature and the time to cook because you want to get this this ultimate result from it, right? So it doesn't matter what the recipe book says. Follow your own instinct on things. How's it taste? I don't know, I just had another life-changing experience. I, uh, sometimes if you see me and I have no expression, because, I just ate your artwork. Like, I just feel like I just ate Andy Warhol's painting. You know, I'm talking about artwork, and I cannot wait to see these, this uh, artwork in Mexico also. Caught in the bright lights, that's all. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly, <laughs> I'm starstruck, oh! Oh my gosh, just took it. Well, you did this. You you made this. I oh was my just, gosh, I did. I was just I? the guy over your shoulder, but you would made this. So, yeah, I did. Folks, that easy. Again, seven minutes, ten minutes, whatever it took to assemble the ingredients, just let it cook together, stove top in an oven, so wherever you wanted, and boom, now you got a family dinner that you can't get in takeout. You're not going to get in a in a bag in a box kind of a thing. Um, but this this means you are cooking with love for the people that you love and people you care about. And this is what, really, I think life is about. Shared experiences over a dinner table is phenomenal. Amber, you did a phenomenal job with this. Thank you, I feel so good. Well, there you, we you go. Should. Oh my you, god, I made this. Look at it, look at you, it. You've done good. <laughs> you've done good. It's right. really good. So, I think we should do uh, one more mole, course, verde mole. We should do some shrimp. Are you going to make this for your, um, for your mole party? Maybe. You have to. We have to. Have to. Like yes, it is so good. Like I'm like I, I just want to like I have no words. Okay. 
Well, there we are. Folks, thank you for tuning in. There was six or seven of you out there. And any questions, send them to me at shakersmilwaukee at gmail.com. In the meantime, please subscribe, and you will catch another episode or two or three or 20 with Amber and me. And we're going to Mexico to give you even more. Oh, yeah. You're going to love that, guys. I, I'm, we're both going to love it. We are yeah. both going to love it a lot. Cheers. Cheers.